an excerpt from Rock and Sand, an Orthodox appraisal of the Protestant reformers and their teachings, by Archpriest Josiah Trenum, pages 274 and 275. Nevertheless, a rejection of abusive Latin customs formed as the Western Church grew further distant from the patristic spirit and merged herself with kingdoms of this world, does not in any way lead, logically lead to the rejection of authentic holy tradition and the embrace of sola scriptura. The Protestant reformers threw the proverbial baby out with the bathwater. They rejected the innovations of the papacy by becoming still yet greater innovators. They rejected the pope, and each reformer made himself a pope. Anne demonstrated great indignation at those Protestants who did not follow in theological lockstep. This is why we Orthodox, when asked if we are closer to Protestantism or to Roman Catholicism, have at times answered, neither. One might consider the post-schism popes to be the first Protestants. They set themselves up as infallible interpreters of the Bible, and Protestants ran with a version of the papal theory and applied it to every reader of the Bible. In many ways, both Roman Catholicism and Protestantism are closer to each other than either is to Holy Orthodoxy. They often give diametrically opposite answers, but they are asking the same questions. Orthodox Christianity maintains the patristic mind and asks different questions. We also believe that the history of Protestantism, from its very root, bears witness to the lack of apostolic authenticity of the Sola Scriptura doctrine. Why do Lutheran, Calvinistic, Zwinglian, and Anabaptist creeds all differ on fundamental points if the Bible alone is the only authority of their reformers? Why could not Lutheran, Zwingli, and the other reformers agree on the nature of the very central acts of Christian worship, the Holy Eucharist, if they were both simply reading the Bible and following its teachings? By cutting the cords of holy tradition and placing in its stead the doctrine of Sola Scriptura, the Protestants insured theological divisiveness and fracture between themselves and their descendants, and have only multiplied divisions, theories, and interpretations ad infinitum with no end in view to this day. We may judge a tree by its fruit. The Sola Scriptura tree has borne the fruit of division and every conceivable heresy.